The artist who makes no object is no artist. The artist who makes no object is no artist. The artist who makes no object is no artist. The artist who makes no object is no artist. Hey McLennan, question, how to have an exhibition of art that by its very nature cannot be recreated and evidence of which exists only in fragmentary documentary form? For example, how can performance be represented beyond its moment? How can one produce a major exhibition of work when that work is primarily time-based, site-specific, and exists only in the moment of its execution. How can one work with what is primarily documentation of this work to make an exhibition without presenting and confusing the documentation as art in its own right, while at the same time recognizing the documentation's aesthetic and other qualities? How can performance documentation be appropriately used, manipulated and processed for exhibition formats? What is the best way to represent documentation of performances of a few minutes duration in appropriate juxtaposition with performances that last say 144 hours non-stop? How can these performances be appropriately represented in a gallery? Is distinction based upon duration, etc., desirable, necessary, irrelevant? How can a productive relationship be made between performance documentation and a new work performed in or out of a gallery such that neither is inappropriately fetishized or commodified and their exhibition respects the ethos, spirit and intention of the actual work. A. McLennan. Hello Madrid, Richard Delamanci here. Sorry I can't be with you in person. Um, I'm currently doing a residency at uh, Greenham Common, the former American nuclear base. Some say that the only people that can make money in the live art industry are the administrators. 
I think that's a very cynical attitude. As an artist whose work often straddles the worlds of high art and low-grade civil disobedience, I've developed a hypothetical model for economic sustainability, whereby income generated from the sale of my books and related merchandise subsidise my not-for-profit performance work, which in turn informs the content of the aforementioned merchandise. Obligate mutualism, when two things cannot live without each other. Oh, that's my business model anyway, and I'm sticking to it. That's why I'm very grateful to the Live Art Development Agency for publishing my very first DVD, Normalisation of Deviance. There's a danger, of course, that by turning myself into pure product, I risk dissolving the traditional ambitions and tensions of the avant-garde. But, you know, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Leave the avant-garde behind, that's what I say. In the fine tradition of live artists who reach a certain age and realise they haven't got any money and they're getting too old to perform, last year I held my first gallery exhibition at Pump House Gallery, London. Some of my ideas are so new that they seem rubbish at first. As such, there is currently no market value for my object-based work. Although, you know, Van Gogh only sold one painting whilst he was still alive. So clearly, suicide is an option. Anyway, my studio's filling up with work, so sort it out, Arco. I'm counting on you, Madrid. I'm leaving now to throw myself in front of a lorry.